Hey guys. So I wanted to talk with you today about mistakes and discouragement in gardening um, because I've made a huge mistake. One that's going to set me back quite a bit. And it's even more embarrassing because I'm the teacher. And I could have easily um, hid this from you guys, probably. Uh, you'd probably wonder why I was so late, but I could have started a whole new crop of seeds. I could have bought transplants, but that wouldn't teach you anything. And I, I'm hoping this video is, is one of the most important ones that I do because I've seen in our Facebook group recently, a lot of people discouraged. Something happens with their seedlings. They did something wrong, weather, you know, whatever it is. Um, as gardeners, we're never going to get everything perfect. Um, challenges come up all the time. That's part of gardening. It's part of a process that we have to accept uh, and just learn to roll with. But sometimes it's a little more difficult than others. So I'm hoping what this video can teach you is to, number one, avoid the mistake that I made. Um, and number two, that mistakes, that discouragement, happen to everyone, not just newbies. I've been doing this for 35 years almost. And um, now this is a big one. You know, this is my first spring planting in a new location, in a new climate, in a new garden, new everything, right? And uh, so I'm going to blame it on that a little bit, but not really <laughs> when you see what the problem is. So let me just talk to you about what I did and how I'm gonna fix it, most importantly. Uh, and how to get past the discouragement. I will tell you that living here now, you know, there's discouragement all the time. Even though we're, we seem to be making a lot of fun, good progress. Uh, if you watch our Homestead channel, Next Level Homestead, we're keeping you updated on all the progress we make, building all of these gardens, putting together our homestead, our little farm here. Um, but, Looking around, when I came from such a lush, finished garden, uh, looking around here and constantly seeing dry, dead, unfinished, you know, plowed up, trenches, I mean, the whole nine yards, it can get a little bit discouraging day after day. And I just want this to be done. And I know that I, I just have to be patient and enjoy the process, like I always tell you. And I, I am, but I have my moments. Especially the last three weeks since I made this mistake back here behind me. Um, so three weeks ago, we had the beds in, and this garden was already late. Number one, because I had to build it. I had to build all of the terraces. And, and I was a little behind schedule. It took a little longer than I, than I thought. A lot of other things came up, sickness and stuff. But I finished it and I was okay with being late because I, I almost needed to be later this year. Something fun and exciting is happening in July. There's going to, and I can't talk about it because it's not my project to talk about. But in July, a professional film crew is going to be here for three days filming. Um, that's all I can tell you right now. And so I needed to push things back because a lot of times here, because we can start so early, by July, things are looking a little bit worn out and dead. That's, it's very hot here in July. So I needed to have it pushed because of that. And so three weeks ago, we started direct sowing our seeds into these new beds. Got the new compost in, everything was perfect. Or so I thought. Uh, Emily and I planted the seeds. We planted beans, uh, two different kinds of beans, or three. Uh, we had our potatoes in the ground, which I did on a video. Okra, squash, cucumber, and um, everything went fine that day. Now, it was warm. We had a hot spell after that. It was in the 90s. But I kept everything watered, and um, after about a week, there were no signs of germination. Now, typically beans and squash, you know, they're pretty quick. They bust through the ground with those big leaves and that wasn't happening a week into it. So I thought, okay, I'm just gonna be patient. You know, it's a new garden, new location. 
because something's bound to happen soon. Maybe four or five days went by and one little bean poked out of the ground. Then it was two weeks and I might have had two beans. And then this last week, a couple of okra have popped up, a few more beans, um, a couple of cucumbers, but nothing like it should have been. I mean, it's very spotty germination overall. I would say 10% at most have germinated after three weeks. Then I started to notice that the seedlings that were coming up didn't look super healthy. I mean, the first new leaves should be bright and green and vibrant. And they weren't. They were uh, kind of a little yellowy, a little brown, a little dry looking. Some of the beans, uh, a good majority of the beans that were coming up just this last week had issues like the seed leaves weren't developed. All it was was the two halves of the bean that had broken open hanging there on the stem with another secondary leaf already coming out. Some came up without any leaves at all. It was just the stem. So I would be lying if I said I didn't freak out a little bit. Like, what is this new place have that I'm not understanding? Because all the beds you see below here, they should all be covered in plants. I mean, they should be, you should see green all over them, and you don't. So I took a step back and I tried to calm down a little bit and think, okay, what, what could it be? It's not the seed, because these are different types of seed from different companies. It's not the water, I watered uh, once, sometimes twice a day. Um, the weather, it's been kind of crazy, hot, cold, uh, but you know, that really shouldn't affect them the way it's affecting them. So the only common denominator that I could come up with was the compost. I had this huge pile of mushroom compost delivered, uh, what, back in, it was before Christmas, it was December, maybe even November, I don't know. Uh, but anyway, I used it, um, I had two loads delivered. The first load was back right after we moved in and I used that in the fall garden and everything went great. It was perfect. The fall garden, you know, thrived from the beginning. Now I didn't sow seeds in the fall garden directly. I, I put in transplants that I had grown indoors and it's been years and years since I've gotten mushroom compost at my last house. You know, I didn't have a place to dump it first of all. So I just bought bags of compost from the stores. So this second pile that we had delivered, I just put in there expecting the same good results as in the fall. Um, however, apparently mushroom compost can have a lot of salt. This, from my understanding, comes from uh, hay from a racetrack nearby. And uh, so it's got horse manure in it and horses, um, their urine and their poop can be salty. They lick, have salt licks, you know, cow manure, same thing. So even though it's composted, that salt needs to be leached out. And that is done by sitting for six months, letting the rain pour on it and all that. And that's not, it, we didn't do that. So the lack of plants you see and the sickliness of the plants you see I believe are uh, an abundance of salt. So I don't have the time, the energy, the heart, or the money to replace all of the compost in those beds. So what I'm gonna do is, number one, I'm gonna do a gypsum drench. I'm gonna put a lot of gypsum. I have to go buy it because the two places we went yesterday didn't have it, so I gotta look around. Uh, put a bunch of gypsum on there water it in, and that is supposed to bind with the salt and help it to leach out quicker. Because I'm already severely behind, I can't wait for that to happen to then plant my seeds in there. So what I'm gonna do is dig out rows, like a little trench, fill it with the Kellogg's raised bed mix bags you see right there. Um, what I used to use at my old house in the raised beds, that's what I filled them all with. So put kind of a safety spot or safety um, buffer of that in the trench and then sow my seeds directly in that. Hopefully when the roots you know go into that they'll be fine and then they'll be strong enough when they move into the soil and hopefully more of that salt will have leached out. I mean I'm just crossing my fingers at this point but it's all I can do really. If you've dealt with salt issues and you have any other um, tips 
please leave them below. Uh, for me and for others who might have made this same mistake or will be wondering why their seedlings look like this. So anyway, uh, I didn't hide it from you. I, I feel like I need to be transparent in everything I do here because we're all gonna run up against issues, problems, and uh, number one, you need to know what to do if you have salt problems, and you need to know that it happens to everyone. Enjoy the process of gardening. I'll never make this mistake again, never. So I, I learn, I move on, just keep going. It's hard sometimes, harder than others, but that's gardening. <laughs> I'll see you guys later.